This is May the 11th. It is Tuesday. It is a joy to come to you with today's devotional. Our scripture reading is Deuteronomy 16 and 17. And the overall title of this devotional is Obedience, Justice, and a Leader of God's Choosing. Now, as we come to Deuteronomy 16, we sense the urgency of Moses as a leader. He knows that his days are waning, his, his day of departure is at hand, and he is challenging Israel with the urgency, really, of a father to his family. He is preparing that nation to go forward without him. Now, because worship would be central to Israel's heritage, it was essential for the people to have one place where they would offer sacrifices to the Lord. Now, unlike the heathen, in which it seemed that every town, every village had its own gods, its own deities, had its own places of worship, in Israel, because there, we acknowledge that there was one Lord, there is one God, and that God had determined that there would be one place of worship and one place of sacrifice, and that would be at his sanctuary, his tabernacle, and the courtyard of his tabernacle, where, Deuteronomy 16 and verse 6, he had placed his name. Now, we read in Deuteronomy 16 and verse 16 that there were three times of year that the men of Israel were required to appear before the Lord. That is, make their journey to the tabernacle as a body of believers. Now, the first feast, the first time of the year that they would gather as a congregation was for the feast of the Passover. It occurs in the first month of the Hebrew calendar, it is uh, really, it would be our March to April time. It was the, the time of planning. It was the springtime. Uh, and so as we have looked in the past at the Feast of the Passover, I'm not going to spend time with it today other than to realize that it was memorializing what God had done in Egypt so many years before. A constant reminder how the Lord had spared the firstborn of Israel because of the blood of the Lamb that had been placed on the doorpost. Unlike with the Egyptians whose firstborn died, including that of even Pharaoh himself. This was also the season in which leaven was to be purged from the home, and the people were to eat unleavened bread. Leaven in the Old Testament and the New Testament is a type of sin. So during this feast of the Passover, this time in which a lamb would be sacrificed by each of the households, it was a constant reminder of God's loving provision and how God's people should put sin from themselves. Now, the second time that we find that the men of Israel would gather was the Feast of Weeks. This marked the time of the harvest, the beginning of the harvest, the giving of the first fruits. It occurred some seven weeks after the Passover. Men would memorialize God's blessings, God's grace, in an act of thanksgiving, giving free will offerings of that which God had freely given to them. Now, the third feast in which the men of Israel would gather was the Feast of the Tabernacles. It was the end of the harvest season, and men would build booths. Now, it's thought that the idea or the uh, the memorializing of this time with the building of booths was because it would not be unusual for men to build booths, uh, temporary shelters out in the fields where they were working, and they could seek shelter from the heat of the day as they labored in their field. I don't know the background, but that's where we will end that. Now, Deuteronomy 16 concludes with the central part of this devotional, and that was a focus on the matter of civil order and justice in Israel. Now, as the 12 tribes of Israel go into the new land, they would be scattered in a far and wide manner, each tribe having their own territory. And so it was very important that there would be one rule, one law for the land. And so Moses is emphasizing at the latter part of De Deuteronomy 16 the need to make sure that there was justice in the land. And by the way, verses 18 and 19 in Deuteronomy 16, that there was no prejudice. No judge could be 
bought, no a rich man or poor man would have favor in the eyes of the law. There would be that fairness, that justice. Just again, a reminder, even though this culture today that we live in paints the law of God as something that was oppressive, it was not. It was actually more just than that under which we now live. Now, Deuteronomy 17, the theme continues of justice and the character of of the king. Now, in the matter of capital punishment, that is, a man has committed an offense, therefore he should be put to death. There are several things that would fit under that category. One is idolatry. The other would be murder, taking a man's life. Now, in order for there to uh, for a man to be put to death under the Old Testament law, there would have to be not one but two or more who would give witness, having uh, seen this individual commit an offense worthy of death, and just to bring the gravity of the witness and the accusation that they would make against someone who would be put to death, those witnesses would have to put their hands upon the one who was to be condemned. In other passages of Scripture, if they were going to be stoned, they would have to be the ones. The witnesses whose testimony would condemn a man would have to be the first one to cast the stone. Now, uh, another thought that goes with this as well the uh, Moses recognized as to the Lord that there would be a day that Israel would demand a king to be like the other nations. And so the question we would ask, what manner of man would the Lord have to rule Israel? Well, the answer to that is found in Deuteronomy 17 and verses 15 through 20. For instance, here are several qualities that were essential for the man who would one day be king. One, he would have to be a man whom God would choose. Number two, he would have to be a Hebrew. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 15, no stranger, no non-Hebrew was ever to rule over Israel. Number three, he would have to be a man of humility, not set his heart upon uh, many horses, many wives, or riches. Deuteronomy 17 verses 16 and 17. Number four, he would have to have a copy of the law. Now listen to this. The law of the Lord written by himself, by his own hand. He was to study that law. The law of the Lord was to be kept beside his throne as a constant reminder that he, as the king, was to be making sure that the judgments of the land were in keeping with the word and the law and the statutes of the Lord. Now, the law reminded the king that he was not above the law, nor was he above the people. In fact, Deuteronomy 17 and verse 20, his heart be lifted up above his brethren was a concern. You know, our problem in our culture today in America, we have politicians that believe that they are above the law. We have politicians that believe they're above the people. And yet, constitutionally, as a democracy, the leaders of this society are to serve the will of the people. And we as a nation have gone far astray from what God's will would be for his people. Now, our 21st century world is following a path to judgment and destruction. And it should be the, the hope and the desire and the prayer of all of God's people. This Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14 would be true for us as a nation and true for your country. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We'd love to sing God bless America, but the truth is this. If we continue on a course of rebellion against God and his word, we have nothing but the judgment of God to fear. Let you and me be a testimony of God's grace, his salvation, and may we be the ones that maintain a desire for law, for truth, and for righteousness. God bless you. Have a great day. I hope this lesson, this study, has been an encouragement to you. Bye-bye.